Good morning everyone, and today we're hopping back into Pop Girl Studios with part 6 of the Summoner's Beast story. Let's hop in and check it out. The sooner our plan got underway, the sooner I could feel to it. Ah, false character being, being drawn up, the Reaper. At least some degree at ease. I just wanted it all to move swiftly and be over so my world could be safe. But I knew with multiple Archon demons involved, anything could happen. The maniacal Cypheromoth had come to my world, but technically I should have no knowledge of that. Another Archon demon, Fantarel, going under the disguise of Torali, had been residing in a village of my world for months without my knowing, and now yeah, she was chilling. helping us rid my dimension of her sister. Unfortunately, Torali couldn't allow Cypheromoth to find out about her alliance with us. Torali could tell us where in my world her sister was, but we had to pretend we found out through a different source. This was why I enlisted the help of a group I'd worked with many times in my world, called the Slayers of Cursed Predators. Ah, they were a secret SAT collective Foundation. of knights and researchers who had a colossal kingdom in the Arctic, where they contained, studied, and trained to kill the most anomalous and dangerous creatures of my universe. They had eyes all over the world, and it would not be outside the realm of possibility for them to quickly find an invading demon, especially considering she'd likely have infected at least one particularly dangerous creature upon arriving. Her techno-organic demon virus could near instantly kill whatever creature it infected, then reanimate mm -hmm. their corpse into a soulless beast under Cypheromov's command. Once Torali directed us to where Cypheromov was, the nearest Slayers of Cursed Predators would go to her location and promptly report to me. From there, it would be perfectly reasonable for me to arrive along with all my interdimensional allies, including the greatest threat to the Archons in all the multiverse, our noble and fierce team leader, Alexis Jones, wielding the power of the Reaper. When the um, Reaper killed um, an Archon um. demon, not only would their physical form be wiped from the multiverse, but as would every single demon under their command. All the worlds Cypheromov had demons invade- Oh, so the Reaper is pretty much just a control alt delete Being would Love be it. saved from her infection. <clears throat> These details were gone over quickly but clearly at the base of my interdimensional allies in Dimension A016. Usually, our team meetings were run by Alexis Jones and Sterling and Geel, but given we were all headed to my world and I had the most knowledge of our situation, Sterling stepped down and I was made temporary team leader with Alexis. It was a strange feeling instructing a group as large as ours. There were nearly 20 core members now, and well, some I knew well, such as the love of my life, Kayla, Others, like Skinner and Harold the Herald, I'd had oh, a little in the way of the? personal conversations with. I was also distracted by the fact that, in the minutes building up to the meeting, as most were getting their battle attire on, Torali seemed to be deep in conversation with one of our allies, Astra. I had just learned moments prior that the Archons were searching for information on Astra's cruel and devious mother, Tarsa. They seemed to have no knowledge oh, of the yeah. fact that Astra was Tarsa's daughter, or that she currently had Tarsa locked away in a pocket dimension of A016, the world Astra was the overseer of. While Astra was an old friend at this point, and had helped save my world once before, I also knew she wasn't the most responsible of my allies. The information about Astra's mother could be useful leverage against the Archons if used wisely. I hoped Torali wouldn't get the information. It could treat it as both a blackmail and a trump call. Out of her, a trump before call. we knew how we wanted to but utilize the hell. it. We brought Sir Bright and the shapeshifting dragon Crossfire from the Slayers of Cursed Predators to our base for this meeting. Though, that also meant we had to do the meeting outside to accommodate Crossfire's large stature. My current dragon mount, Wellerman, tried fighting Crossfire as he was ever eager for battle, <laughs> but I managed to calm him into backing off by singing a verse of his favorite sea shanty, off which he was named. By the time mm -hmm. the meeting was concluded, I was feeling in over my head. Just prior to headed back to my world, I went to Alexis for guidance. Alexis, how do you so confidently take charge over a group like this? I know many of the group are your close friends, but... There are also those in our ranks that you do not exactly have a very trusting history with. She gave a swift nod, 
That's true, but I also know what I can trust everyone on this team to do in what circumstances. Mm. For instance, I'm sure you noticed Astra flirting with an Archon demon before the meeting started. I was caught off guard by that description. <laughs> you think Astra was attempting to make a romantic pass at Torlai? Alexis nodded. Astra heading oh. on an Archon demon is exactly something I'd expect her to do. Outside of life-threatening situations, oh. she doesn't take things that seriously and can be a bit irresponsible. But I also know when we're in the thick of it on a mission, she tightens up her act and I can trust her to take orders or take initiative. Even people like Harold. He may technically be our group's prisoner, but he also knows how to follow orders and is always looking to impress whoever is giving them to him. Then, luckily, that there are good, people like Sterling, Kayla, Kate, Heath, Mara, Benny, and you that I'd trust with my life in any situation. Basically, you just have to know what kind of trust you can put in your team in what situations. You're never going to have a perfect team around you or be a perfect leader yourself, but you can always be aware enough of your team members to know what you can trust them to do and when. Of course, That's true. there's a wild card in the mix. She gestured towards Torlai, who was winking at Astra just as she teleported back to my world of T905. You might just have to go with your gut and do your best. I don't trust Torlai, but I also know I am biased by how much I hate the Archon Demons. So, you're going to have to be the one to decide how much trust we put in her and how tight of a leash we keep on her through this. Can we You've trust her to kill our sister? So, I'm we'll trusting see status your in the back. judgment here. I thought on that for a moment. It struck me that, in spite of her wanting to take over my world, I did feel a fair degree of trust towards Torlai. Logic didn't seem to back up my reasoning, but she struck me as very different from the other Archons. I didn't know if I was being overly optimistic, or if she truly did deserve it, though. I was about to respond to Alexis when Torlai's voice called through our team's watches. Everyone, get to the village of Seethiel now! I quickly replied, the of what? Torlai, what are you doing? You could reveal your allegiance with us if you call us in like this. This wasn't the plan. I don't care. She's got an army of demons attacking my village. Blow my oh, cover all you want. Just get here. Well, that immediate deviation from our plan should have prompted some distrust. Admittedly, I did respect how desperate she was to protect a village of humans. That certainly she wasn't the common home. trait of the Archons. Promptly, everyone in our group transported to the nexus point of my world. I made a portal from there to the village of Seethiel, and we emerged into Seethiel, chaos. Okay. I promptly mounted Wellerman's back and soared up over the scene to get a better look. There were dozens, if not hundreds, of drakes and ogres and hounds with Cypheromov's infection on them attacking the village and its people, with many more en route across the nearby fields. Lumbering towards the village was also a 70-foot beast with a black-plated skull that oh, I quickly no. understood to be the Tarask Torlai had battled with recently herself. Suddenly, an unfortunately familiar green mechanical demon swooped up in front of me, with her tentacles transformed into a set of wings. Well, well, isn't this an interesting turn of events? I knew my sister's bloodlust had gone dry, but I didn't expect her to literally have befriended the enemy. I wasn't sure if I could salvage any of Torlai's cover, but I at least tried. Befriended is a strong term in this circumstance, demon. Both of us just want you out of my <laughs> world. She wants it for herself, and I want as few Archons in it as possible. Your yeah, army you may be impressive, but I doubt you can handle the might of a fellow Archon in allegiance with the Reaper and my team of allies. I recommend retreating. Her ever-present <laughs> vile- Translation? Get the hell out of my world! will grin widened farther. <laughs> oh, I'm not concerned. Not since I found for my collection the greatest new toy that your world had to offer. My eyes had not gone yet up to the clouds above, but a bellowing shriek promptly whipped my gaze up to see a glowing green mass above. It swooped down through the haze oh, and my that's the Godzilla body roll. froze in awe and in horror. Long had I awaited to see the legendary beast in person, but now I wished I hadn't. The great dragon Gojiralith was awakened, but now infected and under Cypheromov's control. The, I knew I didn't have the luxury of panic. I was sure everyone else was seeing this too. I promptly called through my watch. Alexis, Cypheromov is at my location. Powerhouses, take her out fast and her demons will fall. 
Astra, make a portal for the Slayers of Cursed Predator forces to come through and help protect the village. I stared up at the approaching monster and patted my mount on the head. I hadn't expected this test to come so soon, but there was no avoiding it now. Wellerman and I will handle Gojiralith. Wellerman eagerly soared upwards towards the dragon five times his size. The dorsal plates on its back glowed the sickly green hue shared by many of Cypheromov's infected. It broke my heart to see this great beast slain and under her control. But if it had to rest, it would rest in peace, not with its corpse as a plaything for a mm -hmm. demon. It opened its- It should rest as one, not as a puppet. ...ma to fire a twisted version of its famously powerful breath towards us, so Wellerman soared quickly to the right. We couldn't risk it missing us and hitting the village below. It released its blast, and I practically felt as though my back had instantly been melted off from the heat, despite the beam not even having been close to hitting us. It chased us with the breath, but Wellerman's incredible speed was more than enough to evade and fly past it up into the air above. Its breath stopped, and I quickly surveilled the scene below. Alexis was on the ground of the village, but wielding a reaper-forged sword, aiming a massive torrent of nice. flying stones towards Cypheromov, who was getting battered and trying to cover herself. She opened a translucent green shield from her palm that blocked some of the blows, but then didn't see that our other two powerhouses, Heath and Mara, were simultaneously leaping towards her back. Keith unleashed yeah. his famous hurricane hammer, and Mara swung a burly demon fist of her own right into the Archon's spine. Strike. I could practically feel the shockwave from where I was, as Cypheromov was smashed into the ground, closer to Alexis. Meanwhile, Astra was still with Torlai. Our apparently friendly Archon demon was protecting Astra, as well as any nearby villagers, as Astra made a portal big enough for a small army of slayers of cursed predators to charge through, significantly increasing our numbers. Crossfire was even distracting the Tarask enough to keep it from getting to the village. It seemed Good evident job, I could trust everyone in their tasks. I just needed to show them that I could be trusted with mine. Gojiralith flapped its mighty wings and soared up towards us. Jaws spread wide. I hadn't yet activated my summoner's link with Wellerman, so I couldn't sense as easily what he was about to do. But in the least, I could help motivate him. I somewhat nervously started into another sea shanty I was familiar with to encourage Ooh, him all. I wonder which one it is Come this time. Come young fellows who follow the sea. Way, hey, blow the man down. And pray, pay attention, and listen to me. Huh. Give me some time to blow the man this down. This is the one I thought. Blow before. the man down, bullies, blow the man down. Way, hey, blow the man down. Blow him right back. Weirdly, my brain for some reason was starting to think it would be uh, yeah, uh, either my mother told me or uh, Leaf or Johnny Leaf or one of those two. I don't know why. Give me some time to blow the man down. Anyway, that's half of the drawing done and it's already looking awesome. Now. Gojira well, growled appreciatively as it let Gojiralith get surprisingly close. But once it was nearly upon us, Wellerman shot a beam of freezing water into the monster's throat. It snapped its mouth shut and turned its head. We then swooped down along its back with Wellerman dragging its claws along the beast's back. Unfortunately, this did very little. Gojiralith's hide was incredibly durable as it was, but with Cypheromov's mechanical infection reinforcing it further, the beast's hide was near impenetrable. Oh, when we got nearly past Gojiralith's body, it swung its tail and smashed off course. Made it swung its tail like so vibranium. fast that it even ended up striking itself. Well, adamantium. Though I barely noticed this as I oh. tumbled through the air, nearly flying off Wellerman's back. Luckily, he regained composure quickly and flew us straight down. He dove across the ground and, oddly enough, he landed in the fields a short ways outside the village. Wellerman turned his head back to me and gestured quickly to the ground. He was telling me to get off. I didn't know what he was getting at, but I thought about what Alexis had said about trust. Wellerman didn't always do what I wanted, unless I sang for him, but I knew I could <laughs> trust him to do the right things to win a fight. Fighting may as well have so been his life. Dragon. Plus, there was little time to think as Gojiralith was headed towards us with a green beam charging up. I dismounted and Wellerman bumped his head into my arm with my glowing overseer runes. Hoping I understood right, I turned them and started my summoner's link. I call upon the aid of Wellerman, summon forth great beast. 
The link was made, and Wellerman left me on the ground as he burst up into the air towards Gojira Lake. All right, here I could we now go. see and feel what Wellerman did as he soared up to the side of the monster so that, once again, its beam would not shoot towards the village. Gojiralith moved faster, desperately trying to strike Wellerman from the sky with its breath. I could feel the heat of the beam as Wellerman did, but also the rushing of wind as he flew circles around the attack. I also saw through Wellerman's eyes as he stared quickly at a spot on Gojiralith's back. There were a few punctures in it, and it was bleeding as though they were fresh wounds. Oh. Those hadn't come from Wellerman's attacks. They must have been from Gojiralith's own plates on its tail, stabbing into it when it struck itself. I thought I oh, it's like the uh, damn robot from Incredibles. It can only damage itself. I now understood Wellerman's angle. He then shot across the sky away from Gojiralith, almost as if fleeing, though I could tell that was not the intent. The mighty beast chased after him but was not nearly as fast. Wellerman got miles away in seconds, but made a rapid turn directly back towards Gojiralith. Wellerman flew as fast as he possibly could. Gojiralith fired its beam once more, but my speedy dragon swooped around the blast. While moving at full speed, Wellerman then spun and slammed its body into the side of one of Gojiralith's dorsal plates. I felt the quake of pain burst through my body, as if I'd just fallen off a cliff to solid ground. Wellerman must have felt that pain more multiplied, but did not let up. Even with all that force, it was only enough to crack the plate. But that was enough for Wellerman. He, he then clung to Gojiralith's back and kept slamming his head against the cracked plate, breaking it more and more. Gojiralith tried to shake Wellerman off, but couldn't reach him. It swung its tail and smacked Wellerman. I felt the stabbing pain in my own back as some of the plates of Gojiralith's tail stabbed into Wellerman, but he still unrelentingly held to his task. Finally, with one last smack, half the dorsal plate broke free. Wellerman quickly yes. grabbed yes. it and spun it around. He then swooped right along Gojiralith's wing and stabbed the beast's own plate into its flesh, slicing right through and along it. Gojiralith yes. shrieked furiously and smacked its wing up to hit Wellerman away. He tumbled off to the side, but still held to the dorsal plate. Plus, at that point, he'd done enough damage. The flesh of Gojiralith's wing was sliced open enough that he couldn't stay airborne. He flapped and glided down back in the direction of the village fields. By the time he landed, he was nearly back in the field I was in. He was now grounded, and we clearly had an effective weapon against him. We Wellerman have flew back to me with the plate still in his claws. Incredible work, Wellerman. Now let's go put the poor beast out of its mind. Taren, I don't know if you need to be so quick to kill that thing, Astra huh? suddenly said through my watch. I promptly replied, What do you mean? It, it's infected by Cypheromov's virus. It's, it's already, already dead. dead. Astra replied, Torilai told me that some powerful enough monsters and people can hold on to life longer than others when infected. Use your overseer <laughs> vision. Look into its energy makeup. I did as suggested I could see the glowing orbs and channels that made up the mighty dragon's body beneath its physical form. This creature's structure was incredibly intricate and complicated. I think we found the ace of the team. Complicated, and clearly there was an infecting energy seeping into it. But to my shock... The golden sphere of energy that allows a soul to manifest into a form was still lit. If that remained, then Gojiralith's soul may still be in there, beneath the virus. It could still be alive. That is incredible. Thank you, Astra. Thank you, Torilai. Thank Wellerman, you. Get me close to Gojiralith. I have no idea if this will work, but I have to try. I leapt onto Wellerman's back as I said, I release my summon, letting go of my connection to Wellerman. So I was free to try making another. Yes, I know yes, you were enjoying yes. fighting that beast, but now let's see if we can make it a friend. Wellerman snorted disapprovingly, but still shot up into the air toward <laughs> the now running beast. It fired at us once more, and Wellerman spiraled around the blast again. We got close, and I turned the runes on my arm, still doing my best to hold tight to Wellerman. I then switched my grip and pointed my glowing arm at Gojiralith, doing my best to find connection to the creature's soul. Do it. Do Mighty it. Gojiralith, please listen. I know there is a virus trying to overtake you, but I also know you are still in there. If you agree to become one of my summons, then our souls can be linked, and I might be able to help push out the virus. Of course, I knew this may just cause the infection to spread to me through our link, but at this point, I that also have to trust myself. I was the overseer of this world, and my abilities should be amplified well within it. I had to trust that that and my own will would be enough to get this done. Plus, being fully transparent, 
the idea of having Gojira Lith as a summon was beyond enticing. Well, the yes! The who would it? showed clear signs of aggression towards us still, I could feel a sort of agreement from within it. Wellerman, get me onto its back. Like, if it could uh, struggle but speak, it would most definitely say, like, I accept. We soared closer and closer, and just as we flew over its head, Wellerman spread its wings wide and stalled. I dropped off my mount and gripped onto one of the plates on its back, pressing my palm into it. I hereby align with Gojiralith and allow my consciousness to consider it another vessel. When it accepts my call, our souls unite as one. The second I finished speaking, my own heart bonded with the overwhelming might of Gojiralith. Yes! But I also felt as though there were metal monsters clawing into my body, as though it were trying to tear me apart piece by piece, devouring my flesh. I was feeling the infection on Gojiralith. I tried to divert all of my focus from my own body into Gojiralith's. I wasn't sure how much my own strength could help this mighty creature's, but soon I reactivated my overseer vision and looked into the creature's energy makeup again. I could see the direct link between my own soul and Gojiralith's. I also realized that I could then divert energy from the center of its body towards the encroaching infecting energy. Do it. The golden light of its soul with my guidance spread out across its form and quickly began pushing out the infection. I felt the pain of my own body reducing as the green and black energy retreated and retracted. I glanced briefly <laughs> around me to see that the mechanical alterations to the mighty beast were also withering and flaking away. Yes. After a few moments, there was nothing left of Cypheromov's infection, and Gojiralith let out a triumphant shriek that echoed across <laughs> the country. The creature did instantly it. looked towards the distressed village, and I could quickly feel once more its legendary protective instincts awakening again. Let's go slay the demon that thought she could invade our world. Hell Ojiro yes! stomped towards the fields of the village once more, and Wellerman soared on beside us. I had never felt such overwhelming power in my life. My own body felt as though it could withstand the strike of a meteor. <laughs> Crossfire and some of the other slayers were still struggling with the Tarrasque, but when we were close, Gojiralith fired a blue beam of flames into its side, instantly burning a hole in it. Before it had a second yes. to react, Gojiralith slammed into it, tackling it to the ground. The legendary protector bit into its neck and with one swipe tore the demon's head off. Its body <laughs> instantly began withering to ash. Across the village, many of the other demons had been slain, and the numbers were now easily in our favor. This battle was won, and Cypheromov knew she had to retreat or die. As I looked across the village, I again <laughs> spotted the invading Archon Demon. Do she it. was just on its outskirts, surrounded by Alexis, Heath, Mara, as well as Torali and Astra. Even with all of them attacking her, Cypheromov was managing to hold them off with her tentacles and the blade on her arm. But she was clearly losing strength. I could tell Alexis had struck her multiple times with Reaper weaponry. She was weakened. I leapt off Gojiralith onto Wellerman and swooped down to join them against her. Wellerman tried to soar into her back silently, but she noticed and swung two arms back, grabbed my dragon, and swung us at Heath. Luckily, he caught Wellerman, holding his ground. I flipped off the dragon's back, but landed, seeing that Gojiralith was stomping up behind the demon. Torlai proudly said, Looks like trying to invade a world I already had claimed who wasn't your best idea, <laughs> Cypheromov. Cypheromov Moron. Maybe, but it was still smarter than joining up with the enemy. Cypheromov clicked her tentacles together behind her, then spread them and opened a portal to another realm. The others are going to peel you apart atom by atom for this fanterel. Telling them is going to be fun enough to make up for all of this. Instantly, Torlai's grin faded as Cypheromov was about to fall back into the portal. Wait, wait, don't, don't, what if I... What if I can give you Tarsa? All eyes furiously no! shot over to her. Fairfass! Torlai yelled, prompting the grass all around us to grow rapidly and wrap around our bodies, binding us to the ground. Alexis quickly tore free, but when her eyes fell on Torlai again, she was holding a blade to Astra's throat. Back off, Reaper. Astra can't drag it up when she's bound like this, and you're not as fast as you think. Alexis's teeth gritted together. Damn it. She didn't move. My heart was pounding. She may have betrayed her own family, but now she was betraying us, too. I'd been wrong to trust Torlai. Or at least that was my initial thought. Cypheromov was intrigued enough to not leave yet, though she kept her portal open, halfway through it. You're bluffing. If you knew where Tarsa was, you'd have taken her yourself. Torlai shook her head. Hmm. 
No, I wouldn't. I just want this world. I don't care who gets to invade M308. But I give you Tarsa, and the others will concede that it's all yours, just like you want. You keep quiet about me, and you finally get to invade a world you've always wanted. M308, all yours. Ultimate challenge, just waiting for you. Why does he want deal? it? There was a pause. In that time, my emotions were spiraling, but I was also noticing how loose the vines binding me were. I raised one of my arms slightly, and could tell that if I yanked it hard enough, I could break free. Which made no sense. Heath and Mara were both struggling, and they were many multiples stronger than I. Well, but yes, Twirlite they had done that on purpose? Cyphermov so finally likely. spoke. Where is she, then? Still alive, I assume? Torlai nodded. Yes, indeed, and essentially wrapped up in a bowl for ya. This here is her daughter. Astra isn't a fan of her either, and has her trapped in a pocket dimension. Stripped hmm. her of all her powers, too. I overheard them talking about it earlier today. Fools thought I couldn't hear them. Again, my initial reaction was fury, but I thought more. We had just ask him, but couldn't he just use like his overseal of powers to forcefully close the portal, which would also cut the demon in half? And said in that conversation well, that Tarsa was in a pocket trapple? dimension. Torlai would have had to have heard that another time, or was I mistaken? The grass being loose could also be a mistake as well. Maybe she knew I was weaker and used less magic to bind me. I thought back to what Alexis had said. When it came to Torlai, I needed to trust what my gut was saying. I just hoped I was listening to it correctly. Cypheramov was clearly intrigued. Fine. If you can really give me that traitor Tarsa, then T905 is all yours, and the others never need to hear about this little incident. But now that you're hmm. betraying the Reaper and her friends, I doubt they'll let you remain in this world much longer anyway. You let me deal with the details. Torlai whistled sharply. Her demonic bird familiar, Hunter, swooped down and cawed. The sound waves yeah, physically so formed a blue portal into a cavernous realm. Pocket dimension of A016. Current occupancy? One. Let's go on. And if I see any of you so-called powerhouses coming on after me, I slit Astra's pretty throat. She said, Damn lifting it. Astra's Damn body, it. still Damn bound it. and holding a knife to her. Cyphermov walked cautiously, still holding open her own portal, eyeing Alexis, who was fuming. Cyphermov stepped through to the pocket dimension, and Torlai followed. As she stepped through, though, she gave me the slightest of nods, as if gesturing me along. She got inside, her bird flew in, and instantly the portal started closing. As quickly as I could, I thrust my arms aside and easily broke free from the binds. I nodded to Alexis, then dove through the portal, hoping desperately that my trust in Torlai was earned. Oh boy, Port 7, I can only tell, is going to be the finale, and it's going to be good! I cannot wait! <laughs> That's quite the new buddy that Taryn's got on his team of beast summons. And I'm excited for him to use that one in battle even further. But of course we'll have to wait a couple weeks for the next episode. Though if you do want to know what exactly it is that Tarsa did to betray the Archons that made them want her so bad, you can go check out the seventh episode of Mythal Lethal where that is thoroughly explained. Or just that whole series if you haven't watched Mythal Lethal yet, because there is going to be more tie-in eventually with that series. By the way, for awesome. anyone that's always wanted more physical copies of my work that you can actually read, I am in the process of working on something right now that will not only involve releasing new stories that I'm coming up with nowadays, but also go all the way back to finally releasing physical copies of things like Biomechaela and the Beast Summoner and the early Multiverse Tales episodes. So keep an eye out for updates on nice. that because I'm super excited about that. Plus, Vigilance is almost done, so I'm going to be releasing a book version of that. There's just a lot of fun, exciting things books. happening in the near future. And thanks to the meditation retreat I went on recently, I'm finally just not rushing myself on any of it. It took stepping out of my life for an entire week and rewiring my brain a bit to see how often I've been rushing myself on things. And now I'm just <laughs> not doing that anymore, and everything's so much more relaxing and fun. Well, and it was glad already that, fun man. before. But anyway, besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or uplifting note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is another idea that finally really sunk in while I was at that meditation retreat, which oh, is yeah? that when you stop spending so much time predicting what is going to come, how much work you have to do the next day, what you have to do for school, how someone's going to react to something you feel like you have to say to them, all of this worrying that we so frequently just have stirring around in our minds, when you let go of that and focus in the present moment, it becomes easy to realize that 
anything can happen in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Your life could change at any point. Even if you're home alone, you could get an email or a phone call or a text that suddenly changes your life. The present... That's why I like to say... Uh, so we all know of the classic saying that the past is written in stone. I kind of added on to it and said, and the future is written in sand. The moment is such an exciting place to be, even though it doesn't always seem like that. But if you let yourself rest in it enough, it can really start to feel that way, even when nothing seemingly exciting is happening. I hope that's inspiring, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Which is most likely going to be a fun little, sort of, sci-fi horror one-off story I have in mind. Oh, Involving cool. an old alien tracker we haven't seen in a while. Anyway, I'll oh, see you yeah. there. Goodbye. Uh, Bustal Tomanax, I believe that was his name. Alright everyone, that's going to be the end of today's episode, and I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below, and I'll see all of you all next time when we flick back on. Till then, this is Fox, signing out. Peace.